So quantum mechanics continues to be hijacked by a lot of people that want to press it into the service of some kind of notion of a consciousness or a, an esoteric understanding that has nothing to do with physics. And this is actually a problem that I want to clarify today. And one of the things that keeps getting hijacked by this kind of narrative is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and also what is called the observer effect. Because of that, today I decided to actually explain what these concepts means. What is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle? What is it all about? And how does it relate to the observer effect? Now, the uncertainty principle is actually simplicity itself in what it says. It's basically a trade-off of how much you know about a moving particle. So, let's talk about Newtonian mechanics first. If you have a baseball and you throw it, and you give me initial information, initial conditions, like how fast you throw it, in which direction, kind of like a projectile motion, I can use physics and Newtonian mechanics to identify and actually predict exactly the position where it's going to land and also when exactly it's going to land. So the prediction would be completely deterministic and I can make it up based on the information you gave me of how you threw the ball. In quantum mechanics as opposed to Newtonian mechanics, we are dealing with really small particles and subatomic particles where the scale of the particle actually changes the nature of the particle. That means a photon can behave like a particle but also like a wave and also matter can behave like a wave. Now, the uncertainty principle, first of all, looks like this. The delta x represents the uncertainty in position, and the delta p is the uncertainty in momentum. And it says that if you multiply the two, you get something that is bigger than or equal to a number. Heisenberg's principle basically says there is a trade-off for how much you know about the position and also the momentum. The more you know about the position, the less you know about the momentum, and also vice versa. If you know more about the momentum, then you know less about the position. The idea here being this number is not zero. It is actually more than zero. So if you increase the uncertainty, which means you know less about the position, this number has to change to maintain this relationship because it is greater than or equal to a very specific number and a constant. And this cannot change. So if you increase one variable, the other one decreases. In other words, the more certain you are about the position of an object, the less certain you are about its momentum, and vice versa. The more your certainty increases about the momentum of the object, the less certain you are about its position, the less you know. In fact, you can actually make the uncertainty zero. That means know exactly where the position of this particle is, but in that case, you know zero, absolutely nothing about the momentum of that same object. That means, unlike the example I gave in the beginning, where you can actually predict where the baseball is going to land, you cannot predict where the subatomic particle is, like an electron. You can't tell the position of it, but you can tell the speed. But if you know the speed, you know nothing about the position. So it's a trade-off. You can know more about one, but that decreases the other. So it's kind of like where you have a house and it leaks from here. And as soon as you kind of try to stop it, it leaks from there and you go and you stop it there and then it leaks again from here. I know it's kind of like a strange example, but I'm just trying to demonstrate the trade-off that happens. That's basically what it says, but there's a question here. How does this relate to the observer effect? First of all, what is the observer effect? Again, this has been hijacked. Today, science tells us that uh... The essential nature of reality is non-local correlation. Everything is connected to everything else. That there's hidden creativity. There are quantum leaps of creativity. That there's something called the observer effect, where intention orchestrates space-time events, which we then measure as movement and motion and energy and matter. And addressing Sam, we can have a personal relationship. It's possible for you to look on the internet about the observer effect and you're going to find people saying, well, yeah, if you are playing tennis, for example, in a tennis court and there are people watching you, then you are going to underperform because you get anxious and because they are observing you and that's the observer effect where the observer has an effect on the outcome. But of course, that's not what it says at all in physics. Instead, it says, let's say there is a very small particle that I want to tell the position of exactly. 
what do I do? The easiest way is to shine light at it so I could see it, right? But the problem is the particle is so small that when I shine light on it, the photon of light moves towards it and actually hits it and it changes its position. So me trying to observe it changes the position that I'm trying to measure in the first place. And I shine the light again and then the photon of light kicks it and it changes its position again. I want to make it clear that the observer effect where the act of looking at an object through light, photons, changes its position is not the uncertainty principle. There is a relationship between them, but it's not what the uncertainty principle says. Unfortunately, I've seen explanations of physics from people that know physics that explain it this way, but that's not the uncertainty principle. Uncertainty, again, is only the part where it says, if you know more about the position, you know less about the uh, momentum and also vice versa. So please keep that in mind and also post questions if you don't understand anything that I said here in the comments because I will get to them and maybe in a different video because I'm also going to talk about the observer effect with more details in relation to the Max Planck initial statement of light coming in a quanta of light. And if you enjoy this video, like, comment, blah, 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 subscribe.